hello everyone um good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are in the world um we had a bit of a technical i don't even know how to put it diplomatically fuck up quite frankly um on this one For some reason all of the calendar invites went out for 1600 bst but all the marketing materials and everyone was told that it was starting at 1630 bst so um morgan and i sort of jumped on uh, a little bit earlier than we planned um bit of a rush but hopefully um uh, earlier preparation will pay off either way um thanks very much for joining us um the topic of today's session uh, is probably going to be more of a technical deep dive than anything um you know, Zementum is a is a revenue platform uh, that manages your sales process and the halo psa name is in the title is a psa um we released an integration together it was probably almost a year ago now um, and we've got quite a significant number of mutual partners using Zementum with Halo PSA. Um, but we also get a lot of questions from Halo PSA customers who are looking for a sales platform and a lot of questions from Zementum partners who are perhaps looking for a uh, more modern PSA than their incumbent solution. Um, and so we figured it, it would be helpful for everyone to run through sort of what the end-to-end -end workflows look like. We're going to dig in a little bit into the best practice around the integration settings. Uh, but it's also an opportunity for you to ask any questions uh, along the way. Um, chat is open. Q&A is open. Um, yeah, hit us with anything you're, you're struggling with and, and we'll do our best to either answer it as we go along or jump onto it at the end. Um, Morgan, do you want to give yourself a bit of an introduction? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's uh, that quite funny that uh, getting a message sort of two minutes before four saying, oh, actually, uh, we're, we're going live imminently, but we roll with the punches. So yeah, uh, fortunately, not a problem. Yeah. Um, as you say, like the, the integration has, uh, we, we sort of first collaborated about a year ago now, um, did did a webinar when the integration sort of, uh, I don't know if it's when it first came out, but it was certainly when it was in its infancy. Um, and I think it would be, it's going to be a good opportunity to sort of uh, take a look at, uh, you know, some of the improvements that have been made to the integration. Um, some of the the changes that have been made to, to our respective platforms and, um, yeah like you say any questions that sort of we have throughout um i'll try and keep an eye on I'd probably leave a little bit of time at the end to dedicate to q a so yeah um among my many monitors i've got the chat the q a and the attendees over there i've got the demo screens there and i've got uh morgan aspinall right in the middle i don't know how um, you can do it i'm like i'm looking all over like if i have too much going on i'll i'll, I'll just get sidetracked so i try and I'm trying to just um, focus on the presentation uh, and yeah, uh, I'll, I'll look at some questions towards the end, I reckon. Otherwise I'll just sort of be veering off, uh, looking away from the camera and all sorts. Don't worry, you have a very competent host. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, on to introductions, I guess. Um, I gave a very brief introduction of Zementum, but gonna go a little bit more of an explanation for those of you who don't know who we are. Um, Zementum is revolutionizing the sales and billing process and its many steps into a single workflow. Uh, Zementum offers a comprehensive approach that helps partners to visualize the lead flow and convert opportunities efficiently. Uh, it's a highly custom, got a highly customizable document module to create quotes and proposals and e-sign documents all from one place. You can use it to sync billing information with your PSA so there's no revenue leakage. And overall, Zementum helps you save time and increase margins as you grow your MSP business. Um, there you go. Save time, increase margins by simplifying each step of the selling, onboarding, and booking revenue from customers. Um, oh, too many skips. There we go. Uh, just have a look at what, what I mean by that single platform versus sort of multiple point solutions. Um, Zementum encompasses an entire sales CRM that you can use to manage your sales there to replace the likes of Salesforce, Excel spreadsheets, God help you all, um, and other CRMs like Pipedrive. Um, we've got a document builder, so it knocks out the need for uh, legacy solutions like PandaDoc and IT Quota. We've also got full built-in e-signature capabilities, so if you're using DocuSign, you can get rid of that as well. Um, we've got a load of sales automation stuff that helps to sort of trigger 
various follow-ups and reminders. So if you're using tools like Outreach, perhaps slightly more relevant for larger businesses, you can use Momentum there as well. Um, and then fairly uniquely, we also have licensing reconciliation to help plug revenue leakage. And by that, we mean taking what your vendors are billing you for SaaS licensing and um, any consumption like Azure and AWS and importing that billing data into your PSA so that you can ensure what you're billing your clients corresponds to what your vendors are billing you and therefore plug revenue leakage. Um, I'm going to skip over this. We, we've kind of been into it in detail already. Um, so over to Morgan to tell you a bit about Halo. Yeah, thanks. Um, I suppose for those that don't already know about Halo PSA, um, you know, those, those who aren't aware, um, just to sort of give you a brief overview of the company itself. Um, been around for, for about sort of 30 years now. Uh, the same two guys that, that set the company up are still running the show today, uh, which is a, a sort of breath of fresh air in the, in the PSA space, I reckon. Um, yeah, it, we, we have sort of three core products, uh, all using the, the same code base, which again sort of works in our favor. So we've got sort of Halo PSA, Halo ITSM and Halo CRM. Um, and uh, we've got the sort of the full PSA capabilities. So Ben, if you want to sort of skip over to the next mm. um, slide. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we've got the sort of full PSA capabilities that you would there expect um, from, from any competent PSA tool. We've got the, the service desk, uh, customer management, CRM, um, sales and billing. And uh, some of the some of the features that aren't as sort of widespread in the in the industry as well sort of a, a swanky self-service portal um and other sort of features that we can kind of take from from our, our sort of sister and brother companies um and sort of leverage that in in halo psa so we've we're about sort of 100 tech strong now uh, and growing by the day um we've got three main offices uh, we're in the UK, we're, we're here in Suffolk, uh, in Australia as well, in Melbourne, and uh, in Washington State in the US. So we provide 24-7 support um, for, for anyone around the globe. And we're looking to open some some other offices. Uh, but yeah, keep keep an eye out for that, I suppose, some point in the future. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really a, sort of a, a brief introduction to Halo PSA. I'll, I'll sort of talk about some of the the other cool features as we go through the demo, um, you know, as as you mentioned, it, it's important to consolidate as much as you can uh, from your tech stack. And uh, Halo PSA is uh, very strong in that regard. We've got a, a sort of really, uh, really well built repertoire of integrations, and, and obviously working with other partners as well. So, um, well, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I guess our audience didn't pay to sit here to to watch us pitch our products. Um, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> let's get in, into the main show, as it were. Um, I probably need to work out how to share the right thing now. And so the, the structure we're going to try to follow here um, really is is to start off with looking on the Zementum side of the process, uh, creating an opportunity, putting together a quote or proposal, you know, moving that to one, picking up the process in uh, in Halo PSA, and then look at what the, the onward processes in Halo look like. Um, I'm assuming you can see my screen, Morgan? I can, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Um, so... If, when you log into Zementum, the first screen you'll see is the, the opportunity pipeline. Uh, it's entirely customizable. Each of the columns represents pipeline stages, and each of these cards uh, represent an individual opportunity. Um, you can drag and drop things between stages, so it's really easy to keep your pipeline up to date. Um, we can see when things are due to close, uh, the overall opportunity value, and how that revenue is, is split. Um, as well as whether we've got any upcoming activities. Um, within Zementum, you know, we've got the full document builder capabilities, so you can create quotes, proposals, um, various types, um, quotes, proposals, contracts. Uh, we've also got an assessments module to help 
you know, with that beginning of the sales cycle where we're talking about what problem are we trying to solve for the client, um, you know, it's helpful to have some kind of standardized process to follow there so that all of your sales reps are following the same, the same process. Uh, we've also got a really cool QBR module that really sort of builds on the assessments of, but helps to allocate budgets and timelines to the issues that need improving um, and order form capabilities which are really useful for things like new employee onboarding. You know, if you need, you, if your clients need to be able to order a specific set of kit, like a new laptop, monitor, keyboard, mouse, mobile phone, whatever, um, we can publish an order form that they can reuse. It keeps the pricing up to date. It keeps the products up to date within that order form. Um, so first thing to do is generally going to be to create a new opportunity. Um, what are we doing today? Manage services proposal? Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah. If we can do it against Morgan's Marvels as well. Um, mm. just, I've done a little bit of config in Halo that we'll, we'll see shortly. Brilliant. Um, it is a, uh, let's put it down as a managed service opportunity. Currently, they're a prospect. Uh, I'm the owner for it. Um, we've got a, let's call it a 75% chance of close. And then I want to use the revenue cost of documents to calculate the opportunity value. Um, and we're going to calculate it over a 12 month basis. Um, and we need to choose a halo ticket type here, Morgan. I believe so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. And quick save. Uh, so within the opportunity view, you'll be able to see any uh, communications you've had with the client. It's going to integrate with your Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace mailbox and calendar. So it will pull in any emails relating to that client and that contact. It will also show you any upcoming meetings. Um, and if you've got an integrated calendar, allow you to schedule meetings as well. Um, once we've got the opportunity, you know, the next thing to do is going to be to actually create the quote or proposal. Typically, I'd use a quote for short form, quick win things, like if a client asks for a new laptop to, to replace something that's broken, we do it as a quick quote. They're going to be the short form ones. If they're asking for a, you know, a, a longer form proposal, then we'd use a proposal type document. Um, so... Uh, We've got a recipient to choose here. Uh, was there a particular recipient you need me to use? No, 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 not at all. Any, any of those? Uh, let's Morgan. Um, and then select template. Um, within Zomentum, we include a number of uh, templates out of the box to just to help with with getting up and running, uh, including some. Uh, if you're a member of the Tech Tribe, for example, you might be familiar with their templates, so we include those as well. Um, for this one, uh, I think we're going to go for the MSP program template, create a document. The document builder itself is then the full kind of document experience. A lot of the traditional quoting tools are very hard-coded template-driven, you know, that a a quote you can't modify its appearance on the fly it's a case of putting the products directly into that template and it's very rigid one of the usps with zementum is that it does give you that full document builder experience um, so you, know, you can very easily rearrange content you can drag and drop images text various different block types onto the document um, in order to put some pricing on it i'm just going to drag a quote block onto the document. This doesn't need to be at the end. It could be anywhere. Uh, and I would expect uh, partners to take some time to get the colors and things right, um, which Morgan clearly didn't. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, I, you, you've got me. You've got me. Uh, were there some specific products you wanted me to put on the quote here? Yeah. Um... It, I suppose it's just worth noting that the top three, three products that we have there uh, have all come from Halo itself. Uh, so we can see sort of the, the name of the product, um, the, the SKU, if there is one, um, and 
I've I've established uh, as part of the integration that we'll, we'll see shortly um, to map the uh, sales description in Halo to the description field of the product. So uh, you know below MSA uh, we've got a little bit more information against you know it's managed service agreement using the SLA and support covered by the support pro blah blah blah. Um, so yeah, if you if you slap those top three in, sure. It, um, and I was going to pop a laptop on there as well, I think, wasn't I? Cool, yeah. um, and, and so within Zementum, you know, the, the product catalog is going to be synced with your PSA. So any products you create in Zementum will be pushed to the PSA. Any products that have been created in the PSA will be pulled into Zementum. But you do also have access to Etalize catalog, which is a uh, essentially a global search engine for products that most of the major manufacturers feed their parts into. Um, so if you're looking for a specific HP Z book, for example, we could do a search for an HP Z book. We could then filter it down by specifications, but also load real time pricing and stock levels from any distributors that you have integrated. Um, in the interest of time, uh, I, done a quick search for uh, I'd done a quick search earlier for an HP Z book um, oh, sorry which is available from my integrated distributor tech data at that specific price and they have 21 of them in stock so we can go ahead and add that one to the quote uh, along with those three products that that Morgan had set up from the halo side. Um, and add these to the quote. Um, were we really selling that at zero? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, we'll see when we go over to the Halo side that this is more of a container for uh, creating the agreement itself. Um, okay. The, the 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 revenue is going to be generated from the. Um, the business basic licenses, which will be part of the agreement that we create, uh, which in turn will come from that uh, support plus pro line that we've added. Okay, makes sense. Uh, it's going to increase the quantities and 15 laptops. Um, when it comes to delivering uh, this to the client, we're probably going to want to split it down intersections because you can make things certain things optional so in this example we want to make all of the managed services uh hold on mand oh bit of a glitch there <laughs> it's always great on a real I, demo isn't it yeah it's, it's always the way done. isn't it yeah yeah oh there we go i just didn't like that product um so i'm going to move all of the managed services down into the the bottom section uh, which is going to be for our managed services and all of the items in that section are mandatory. Um, and then we're going to have a section for optional hardware up at the top. And in this section, uh, all products are optional, but we're also going to allow the customer to change the quantity and put some quantity limitations in place. So here, for example, we knew the tech data only had 21 of them. So we want to ensure that they don't sign off more than 21, um, but also choose whether they want it at all. And I'll show you what that looks like from the customer side. Um, and then for the managed services, all of this is mandatory, but maybe we do want them to allow editing the quantity, um, but we have a quantity limit. You know, we as an MSP don't allow more than 10 users, for example. So we want to say that there has to be a minimum of 10. Um, am I going to break something by having 10 of the the MSA? Um, I, I don't think so. You, you wouldn't you wouldn't have more than one uh, anyway, um, but I don't think it'll break anything. Okay. We'll find out. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to preview what it would look like from the customer's side. Um, so that you can see what your your end customers would be seeing. Um, and so you know, we'd use the send document function within Zementum. We could then either do it by sending an email directly from Zementum. We haven't even got an email set up for Morgan. Um, or you can also do it by just grabbing the link for it. Uh, so if you want to send the document through 
uh, through your normal Outlook, for example, you could just grab the link, go over to Outlook and send an email that includes a unique trackable link to the document. Um, however, just to demonstrate it here, um, I wanted to show you how these options work. So we'd said everything in the top section was optional, so they can e either choose to have it or not have it. They can also set their own quantities. Um, but crucially, if they try going over that uh, 22, 21 quantity that we'd set, it's going to throw an error. Down in this bottom section, again, we allow them to edit their own quantities. We'd said that there had to be a minimum of nine. Um, so it's, sorry, a minimum of 10. So if I try entering nine, it, it gives me an error. Um, I think in, in terms of the document editor, probably shown everything I wanted to here. Um, we did recently introduce uh, a chat GPT integration. Uh, it looks like this uh, account doesn't have it enabled. Sorry, Morgan. <laughs> um, but that that's quite cool. You know, one of the hardest parts of writing proposals is actually coming up with the content for those proposals. So, you know, if you've used ChatGPT before, you can ask it for a three paragraph introduction to a managed services proposal and a migration to Microsoft 365, for example. Um, and it will usually spit out some quite useful content. Um, I think so. We, we've sent the, the proposal to the client. The client signed it off from their end. Uh, if you've got Stripe or Connect Booster integrated, you'll be able to also collect upfront payment from them as part of that acceptance workflow. Um, we're also about to launch our own payment solution uh, in the next couple of weeks, which is going to be really tightly integrated with both Zomentum and also with QuickBooks and Xero. So, yeah, as part of that flow, when we when they're signing off the quote, we want them to make an upfront payment by credit card, say, to cover the hardware and the upfront project work. But then in the same motion, we also want them to set up a recurring payment profile, be that by direct debit or ACH or SEPA or a recurring credit or debit card mandate. We can get all of that done in one workflow before the, the quote approvals finished. Um, so the next stage, you know, they've signed it off, they've made the deposit payment, we're going to move it to one. Um, if we had multiple documents on here, we might need to choose specifically which document it was that was being signed off um, here, because the, I'm moving the opportunity without the document actually having been signed, I need to see which one it is. Uh, and I'm just going to click update. And so now I think we should have the full package that's sent over to Halo um, for Morgan to demonstrate what the next set of stages looks like. Yeah, yeah, you want absolutely. To before take over I the screen share. Uh, yeah, sure. I suppose before we start looking at Halo, it's probably worth um, just looking at how we do integrate the two platforms. Um, yeah. So. You want to do that from your side or yeah yeah i will do yeah. yeah let me sure. share my screen uh... cool hopefully you can see that uh yes lovely um so the the first step towards integrating the two platforms is to uh sort of retrieve a uh, client ID and secret to effectively allow uh, Zomentum to authenticate into Halo and communicate uh, with, you know, opportunity syncing, quote syncing products, clients, all of that stuff. Um, so in Zomentum, in your, your settings section, you'll find in, in integrations, you'll have uh, Halo PSA sort of uh, first and foremost there. Um, as we've already connected it, these fields uh, are already populated. But before you um, before you hook the two up, you'll be you'll be prompted to uh, enter the uh, authorization and resource URL, uh, populate a client ID and client secret. So to obtain those from Halo, uh, you would need to first go to your configuration module. So if we go to config. And then we go into integrations and uh, Halo PSA API. What we can do in here is we can create an application 
uh, identities that we can then use for our integrations. So we see we've got the Zementum integration one that I created earlier. Um, I suppose just before we do that, it's worth noting that um, the the resource, your auth server and resource server URLs and your tenant can be found uh, via config integrations, Halo PSA API. So uh, you'll need to, to note those. And then to obtain your client ID in secret, you would need to um, you need to create an application uh, with your authentication method as client ID in secret. You select that, and you're then presented with your client ID and client secret. Uh, you'll also need to specify an agent to log in as, and provide uh, the level of permissions that this application will have to uh, to Zementum. Ben, um, do you know off the top of your head the permissions that are required? Um, we have a knowledge base article with them on it. Um, do you need me I to believe it's read it admin, out? read and edit tickets, read and edit customers, potentially CRM as well, and items. What I did notice earlier that uh, was pretty neat is when you're um, when you're first connecting uh, a halo it does to check momentum. the permissions and tell yeah. you what there and what's missing um yeah i feel we should happy. just address a little bit of an elephant there the the need for admin permissions does come up quite a lot um it's very specifically so that zementum can create edit and delete webhooks um my understanding from the halo engineering team is that that permission the webhooks permission is being separated out from admin at some point in the near term future. As soon as that's been done, we'll then update our integration so that full admin is no longer needed. Um, I think it, it's not lost on both sides here that it's not ideal for an application to have more permissions than is needed. So we are aware uh, and both both teams are working to, to improve that. Oh yeah, um, cheers, man. I was just looking, so I've got the, uh, it's, yeah, it's admin, read and edit customers, read and edit sales, uh, read and edit items, read and edit quotes, read assets, uh, and read and edit suppliers, uh, and then read and edit POS. Um, All reasonable, then, yeah. Yeah, but there is a um, there's a knowledge base article. If you just find the Halo PSA integration on the Zement knowledge base, there is a list of the minimum required permissions. Yeah, cool. Uh, and then, and um, I didn't <coughs> excuse me. I, I could only yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the S um, should be little. I don't know why we've got POS in big. It just looks weird. Anyway. Well, yeah, we we don't have it capitalized here at all. But but yeah, uh, yeah. SOS is SOS, POS is uh, POS, just uh, for people's benefit. Um, yeah, when you're when you're first connecting it, it will let you know the permissions that the application has, and I can only presume that if some of those permissions are missing, it will say connection failed because these permissions yeah. have not been granted. So yeah, exactly, it will show a little red X instead of a green tick for any missing cool. permissions. Nice. Um, now, once once a connection has been established. You'll be presented with uh, a screen where you can specify in Zementum if you want to sort of provide any filtering for the syncing. Now, Ben and I spoke about this earlier, and we're in agreement that uh, we think it's best to to not limit the syncing. Um, you you want as much information flowing between the two platforms as frequently as possible. And uh, my personal take on this is if you're going to start applying if you're going to start applying filters in here there is a potential that you're not going to have the data uh, that you would expect to see in halo uh, that you do see in zementum uh, and that could lead to confusion and so yeah my opinion would be to to leave this all off and just have everything flowing over to halo as and when it's updated in zementum uh, and vice versa yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's more generally the other way. You know, if someone's let's say someone's created an opportunity on the Halo side, 
we then get a shouty all capitals email the integration's broken to our support team because a user can't find the opportunity that they'd created in halo hasn't appeared in zementum and, you know we check the integration settings and we say yes well because the halo uh opportunity is assigned to that agent that agent isn't in the sync filters it it's just unnecessary confusing so yeah yeah generally i'd leave those open yeah for sure for sure i agree cool um now if you did you know if you did decide to add filters fair enough uh our advice is to not but whatever your decision is you can um save and proceed at which point you're presented with some of the the entities or the the entities that uh, do sync between the two platforms and uh, from this you can establish some uh, mappings between the two so firstly you've got your uh, your pipeline mappings um, it's probably worth mentioning that well it's definitely worth mentioning that cementum opportunity stages map to halo psa opportunity statuses so uh, we have our, our different cementum uh, stages here and the list that you have uh, on the right hand side are the halo psa statuses so uh, my advice would be to create some new statuses in halo psa uh, which if people aren't aware you can do so via heading to configuration tickets statuses uh, where you can go ahead and create new statuses in here and you probably want to create some statuses that uh, equate to the zementum stages now the name doesn't have to be identical uh, but you want to make sure that there's a clear uh, establishment between the two i guess another little thing i would add here the, the mapping of Zementum stages to Halo statuses, while it's the best way to do it under current circumstances, it isn't ideal. Um, and we have had quite a lot of feedback to, I think, both, both teams around that. Um, the issue is that Halo didn't originally have the concept of a sales pipeline as, as something in its own right. So our product teams have been working closely together over the last month or so. Halo are introducing an actual opportunity pipeline. Um, and as soon as that's been done, our engineers are going to sort of reconfigure the integration so that we're mapping directly against that opportunity pipeline. And but for now, uh, follow Morgan's instructions. Yeah, well, and all, um, I sort of, uh, I've put something together in the Halo instance uh, that kind of emulates a stage to stage mapping. And uh, again, we'll, we'll see that when we go onto the Halo side, uh, using some of the uh, some of the features that weren't available the last time we did the webinar, namely uh, workflow automations. But again, um, we'll, we'll come on to that shortly. So once you've established your Zementum stage to Halo PSA status mappings, you want to go through to the the tax mappings um your tax codes in halo are configured via configuration billing tax rates uh, now if your halo also is as i mentioned earlier has got a sort of rich repertoire of of integrations um we'll see if we so go back a breadcrumb uh, we have a series of accounting platform integrations where, of course, you can bring the, the tax codes from the respective accounting platform into Halo, uh, and they would flow into this section here. And the options that we see here equate to the options that we have uh, in our Zementum mapping. So, um, yeah, here you're, you're just making sure that your, your Zementum tax categories equate to your Halo tax rates slash codes. You have, in fact, I, I don't think you used it when setting this up, but if you look just above the mappings, there's an import tax rates button, which will bring in Halo's tax rates, create corresponding tax rates in Zementum and map them automatically. So they'll have the same name. You don't need to do any manual config on the Zementum side. Nice. 
That's, and then if you that's... change the taxes on the halo side, that button will say update tax rates instead of import, and it will just pull in it pull in the changes. Cool. Oh, you can do it right. now if you want. I don't think it's going to break anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the should we import and keep existing tax rates instead of uh, deactivating? Go with deactivate. I just hope it doesn't break anything. Normally, <laughs> you'd only be doing this the very, oh, God, a whole list of warnings. Uh, that's that's handy, yeah, though. Don't, you know. don't do it now. Okay. I suppose it, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Um, you, you know, once the, and this, this is true for a lot of integrations, um, once you set it up, you know, make spend the time to set the integration up correctly the first time. Don't do and what I've done. about with it. Yeah, and once and once it's there, once it's in place, um, try not to to be messing about changing mappings and whatnot. Um, it's only going to cause more stress than than is needed. So we won't do that. Um, but Ben, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> um, I, I would advise caution, taking my word. For <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, so next we have our opportunity mappings, uh, or, or more specifically, our opportunity field mappings. So um, I, I mean, the, the top three fields, you, you wouldn't want to change this anyway, in my opinion. Um, makes perfect sense to have the, the title, um, close date, and value sort of flow through natively. Uh, but below that, you you have some agency over where you want the data from these respective fields in Zementum to go in Halo. Um, so I would just add here, this fully supports custom fields, both on the Zementum and the Halo side as well, which is really cool. So if you're wanting to sync specific data from Halo to Zementum, just make sure you create the corresponding custom field in Zementum. Um, which would be under settings and then uh, custom fields uh, on the relevant entity. So if you're wanting to do opportunity custom fields or client or contact, you can create custom fields on each level and you can then basically sync any data you want to with Halo. Word of warning though, just make sure that the field data types are the same. You know, if it's a numerical field in Halo, make sure it's a numerical field in Zmentum if it's a text string make sure it's a text string um, mismatched fields will cause problems yeah, yeah that makes sense um and it sort of touching on the custom fields uh, of course halo also provides the ability to create custom fields so out of the box uh the, the trial that i spun up did not have a ca campaign field so i just went into configuration custom objects custom fields and I created myself uh, a custom field, namely campaign. Uh, that was then available in the list here to, to sync. Uh, did the same thing for one reason and lost reason. So yeah. Um, following on from that, you have the ability to map some client level fields. Uh, you know, I, I'm imagining that, that you're gonna want to be tracking at least some of this information. Um, you know, in particular for, for new prospects as you're uh, gathering information on them and you're going to want to make sure that that information isn't lost when the respective client is created in Halo. So again, you're going to want to make sure that you're um, you're adding your fields in. I suppose that the uh, this also supports custom fields, Ben? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I, I started my MSP in about 2008 and I think even back then nobody had fax machines. So, <laughs> yeah i'm not sure we need a fax number field oh uh, well, yeah yeah um that, that that's a bit questionable that one but otherwise um uh, yeah you you're likely going to want to populate these um contacts uh contact details can also be mapped again you know the top three uh you you're not going to want to be changing that but you have some agency over the fields below uh, and then finally, and probably a uh, point just worth spending a little bit more time on is the product mappings. So firstly, you have the option to specify uh, the type of mapping that you're, you're sort of utilizing from the integration. Um, 
my opinion is uh, map product types to asset groups now in halo um asset groups and product groups uh, are interchangeable um, uh, there's a whole conversation that could be had around that i won't go into detail on that but it's just worth noting that uh, if you see asset group here uh, you're likely also referring to to product groups um, with that selected we'll see our um, the options that we have in here for our sort of halo mappings equates to the product groups that we have in our products module within halo psa so um we didn't have or i didn't have a, a software group created in the trial by default so i created one just by hovering over the list on the left hand side right clicking and creating a new creating a new group um just called that one software again it was then available uh, in the list am i right it, in thinking we can map one to many as um, many to one as well so you could have both hardware and software mapped to non serialized for example because Hardware, I guess, would normally be serialized. Software is probably non-serialized. But could you have them both going to non-serialized, or does it remove the options? No, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, many, many to one. Yep, yep. So you don't necessarily yeah. need to create multiple, uh, create additional asset groups if you don't want to in Halo, I guess. Yeah, yeah, correct. Um, and then. Finally, and touching on the, the point that I mentioned earlier, uh, we have the ability to determine the Zementum product description as either coming from the Halo PSA product sales description or the Halo PSA note. So those respective fields are... Is there ever going to be a case where someone should be using the note? I, I can't quite get my head around the logic of even having that option. Uh, I suppose if quotes are created directly in halo um quote lines initially provide the note field uh, so okay. some people have gone down the route of populating that note field uh, at which point they would want to make sure that that carries over to Cementum as and when they enable that integration um and those those are just the sales description field here and the the note field here uh, against a, a particular product. Cool. Um, and yeah, once you've once you've set all of that up and you you've set your um, your catchalls at, at the bottom and you're sort of saying if, if a mapping isn't established, uh, just put it here by default. Can I suggest save. Don't click save. Guys, it breaks what we've already done. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> we've done it now. Um, fortunately, the opportunity and proposal that you created have already flowed through to halo so uh, that yeah. was in Zementum. it was the uh, la, 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 it was the managed services proposal yeah um so from from halo um we we've of course got our sort of service desk and projects modules and then we've got our CRM module as well which is going to be the uh, the area for all of our opportunities and all of our sales activity so we're going here um we've we've got a sort of series of custom lists that that are provided out of the box um the the configuration of these lists is, is uh, really quite astounding um i mean if we go in you'll see each list can be filtered to have any one of you know literally hundreds of fields at this point uh, filtered by any criteria you want so you can really get creative in terms of creating the the lists that you want to show exactly the opportunities that you want based on on the criteria that you're looking for um i've been lazy and i've just got an unassigned opportunities at the top here where we have our managed services proposal um notice that the the opportunity has come through uh, with a status of one um equating to that that state to status mapping that we saw earlier opportunities come through uh with the the customer details being the customer that you log the op for um, a link directly in halo back to the opportunity in zomentum uh, which is quite handy 
and then uh, we'll also see in that opportunity uh, give it a minute oh, we'll let that load um, we'll also see that um, in our opportunity we've got that quote which contains all of the information uh, all of the core information that we added onto our um, onto our proposal interestingly um, it looks like it didn't bring through the laptop uh, did did you mark that did you opt in for that sorry Ben I think you're muted Sorry, you'd think I haven't done any of these webinars before. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I actually left it optional, but unselected. Is that a problem? No, 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 not no. at all. That, that's that's quite a, yeah. a, a nice demonstration, right? So, um, you know, if you're not opting in for the products, obviously you don't want that to go onto the, the quote in Halo. Because um, the idea is the, the quotes, uh, when they land in Halo, have been sent slash accepted in Zementum already. I believe that's the case. You're not, you're not necessarily syncing draft quotes over. Ben, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I don't think so, no. It's only when this, it's when the document status changes. So when it goes to sure. sent or when it goes to one, it gets pushed. But and, when um, it's sitting in draft, it won't. Cool, yeah, yeah, fair. Um, uh, and it's worth noting that the the status of the opportunity in Halo, I believe, uh, is derived from the status of the opportunity in Zementum. So uh, I was playing about with it earlier, and I sent some quotes off. They came into Halo with a, a status of, of sent instead of accepted. Um, now it's really easy at this point to to sort of fire off um, some of the, the further actions that you're going to want to be performing in Halo PSA once the customer has accepted the quote. Um, and you first of all you need to create your your sales order, which one click and uh, you're there. And um, this is why I uh, I asked you to add the, the particular products that I asked um, into the quote because uh, based on some of the configuration against the products in Halo, we can perform certain actions on the sales order once it's been created. So um, our support plus pro product has um, been marked in Halo as being a contract. So uh, what that means is we have the option against the line in question to create our contract. Um, and that's just based on this checkbox against our product. I believe I'll put it in recurring. Uh, just down here, if um, if a product is marked as being a contract, then we're going to have the option to create a contract direct, directly from the sales order. Um, also, if products are marked as recurring in Halo, which is just based on this checkbox, uh, then we have an option against our sales order to uh, add to an existing recurring invoice or, or create a new recurring invoice. And then finally, uh, if a product has an associated project template linked to it, which is simply based on uh, our project template field here, then we'll have an option to create the project directly from the sales order. So the sales order is the sort of central hub of uh, a lot of the activities that would be occurring in Halo PSA subsequent to a customer uh, signing off on the quote. So. Um, the first thing that I would do is create the contract. It's just going to give me a little modal window where I can um, populate my core contract details. That's going to include uh, options like the, you know, the amount of support that's covered. If this is a support plus pro package, then we might want to have uh, an all you can eat agreement. Um, we can also specify our, our service level agreement against this. So we can pick specific SLAs associated to a contract, save that. Um, the next thing that I would do is I, I would create my recurring invoice for my business basic licenses, um, at which point, yeah, I'll go ahead and create a new one. Again, give me a modal window of the new recurring invoice screen. Uh, I'm 
likely going to want to associate this recurring invoice back to the agreement that I just created, which I can do just by selecting the agreement in here. Um, and we've got our quantity that, that has come through at this point from Zomentum, uh, but it's also worth noting that the, the quantity of our recurring invoice lines can be dynamically selected or dynamically set based on uh, some other entities in Halo. And to achieve that, uh, you just need to, in your quantity option, select uh, what you want the quantity to be based on. So uh, this is our 365 Business Basic licenses. So I'm going to want the quantity to be based on license counts, at which point I'm presented with a table of contents below um, where I can then select the licenses that uh, are against the, the customer in question. Those licenses can come from um, you know, Pax A, CSP. Uh, well, the, the licenses can come from CSP, but you'll also see that we have the ability to import um, or, or link to subscriptions, at which point we can use any of our DISD integrations uh, to get those counts. We've also got the ability to have the quantities based on assets, which will be pulled in from an RMM um, or users again from Azure AD and, and so on. Um, so, you know, the common setup is going to be uh, per per server support. So you might want to have your quantity based on assets uh, and you want the asset type to be server, for example. Um, but not in this case, because we've got our business basic licenses. So I'll go in, I'll pick my license to be business basic. Um, we'll, we'll prorate those changes as they occur in Halo. Save that save save all of that um and, and it's just giving me a prompt here saying uh, i haven't set a schedule for my recurring invoice so i'll never get paid um again do as i say not as i do make sure you set a recurring invoice schedule up um and finally uh, if your your item is linked back to a a project template you can go ahead and create that project one click it's going to apply the configuration of the template in question uh, and it's also going to link that project back to the opportunity that has come from Zomentum. Um, so we can see now all from that one screen I've now got uh, a contract and a recurring invoice uh, for the customer and a project to, um, to, to onboard the customer in question. Um, uh, all with you know sort of five or six clicks there um i suppose the the last point i know we're sort of running out of time but i just wanted to to mention that other um that other point that i was referring to oh, oh there we go uh, that other point i was referring to with regards to um updating the the state the workflow stage in halo based on the pipeline stage in Zomentum. Um, so in your in your ticket workflows in Halo, uh, you can perform something called automations. Um, so if I sort of very quickly just highlight what I did, I I put some automations in place uh, that specify if the uh, if the status of the ticket or the status of the opportunity is moved to assessment, uh, then we move our workflow to the assessment stage. Um, it's kind of emulating um, a link between the workflow stages in Halo and the um, the stages in Zomentum. So let's let's see if we can do it with this one. So we've got our uh, architecture software renewal. Uh, if I go to Zomentum, find that op, and change the stage here. To assessment, for example.
then just refresh. Then the, um, the status has uh, changed to assessment and uh, the workflow stage has also moved forward. Now that should have gone to qualifying slash assessment, but. Um, so that, that's quite a neat way actually then to tie the two together, the statuses and the stages. Yeah, yeah, I've got, um, let's see, this one potentially. It's always the way, isn't it? You, you set it up and it works perfectly and then you go on live demo and uh, it doesn't want to play nice. I think this is a good example. Yeah, so we can see like, as I've been, well, as I've been changing the, the stage in Zomentum, uh, that flows onto the, the opportunity in Halo and then our automation kicks in, progressing our pipeline and we're sort of moving forward. Um, so yeah, as, as you say, it's a bit of a stopgap until uh, we actually implement sort of pipeline uh, sales pipelines um in a more compatible way with momentum but uh, yeah feel if anyone wants to sort of further discuss that functionality with me um feel free to drop me an email sure um everyone's been suspiciously quiet so either we've hit all the nails on the head and they've kept up and got value or they're all watching tv and not paying any attention <laughs> Um, it could, could have gone either way. I, I guess before we wrap up, um, is there any, does anyone have any questions, anything you want to know more about? Uh, you can always reach out to uh, one or both of us if you need any help. Um, I was just going to put our contact details on screen. Um, yeah, if, if anyone wants to have a tour of Zementum, uh, zementum.com slash demo. Uh, same for Halo PSA. They've got some really good demo on demand videos, or you can book a real, real life demo. Um, if you want to reach out to me directly, ben at zementum.com or Morgan, uh, you can email him morgan.aspinal at imaginehalo.com. What's the history there with the Imagine Halo? I have no idea. <laughs> um, oh, we, we do have a question. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not sure. When the uh, from passed... Brian, yeah. when the proposal or opportunity is passed, Halo PSA from Zementum, does it add a PDF of the document or just the link? Uh, I think it adds the PDF when it's signed. Um, do you want to just bring that up at your end, Morgan? Sure. If it doesn't already, it's definitely on the roadmap because I know that's been discussed, but I'm fairly certain it does because it will, it adds the link directly to the document, but I think it uploads the PDF. Uh, so have you got one that's signed? Did you want to sign the the one that we were just looking at? The one that we uh, were well, there, is, there will be a PDF of that one because it's been moved to one. So I think, if it does, it would be under the attachments tab. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Assuming that's it. Hello. Nice, nice. Yeah. So if this <clears throat> doesn't have a signature because we didn't go through the sign process, but this is the, the PDF of the document as well. Nice. Does that answer your question, Brian? Um, cool. It's five o'clock here in the UK. Um, I think it's definitely time to lay on the sofa and uh, enjoy the evening. So yeah, I, I thank you very much for joining us, Morgan. It's been really helpful. Um, oh, Always one more pleasure. question. Oh yeah. Apologies for being late. Uh, will you share the presentation? Uh, yes. Uh, if you were registered for it, you uh, should get it by email. If you don't, uh, just drop me an email um, and I will make sure you get a copy. But give, give it a few, couple of days because it normally takes the marketing team a couple of days to get together with it. Great product, by the way. Which one? Zomentum. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we fight it out. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm I'm sure that there oh, we go. Great. Yeah, yeah. Great product. It's supposed to be plural, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Save saved yourself. Brilliant. Well, thanks everyone for joining.